Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Who should buy a 1000 watt power supply? What are the benefits? And if you don't need one, what else should you consider buying? Now in this video, I have a Corsair RMX 1000 watt power supply. I will take this out of the box. I will show you the features of it. But before we do that, I wanna talk about the pros and cons of one kilowatt power supplies. Basically, who should buy them, why they are a benefit over lower end units, and then an alternative that costs a whole lot less than this beast of a power supply does. First of all, let me talk about who a 1000 watt power supply is for in general. If you are building a high-end enthusiast desktop platform, a Skylake X or an AMD Threadripper system, this should be on your short list of power supplies to look for. If you are building a server with an Intel Xenon or an AMD Epic, this should also be on your short list of power supplies to look for. If you are going to install two, three, or four graphics cards, if you are Bitcoin or Ethereum mining, if you are building a uh, 3D rendering workstation or something that is going to use multiple graphics cards, a lot of storage, and a lot of components plugged into your machine, you definitely are gonna need a kilowatt or possibly more in terms of power to your system. Power consumption varies from device to device, but in general, the Skylake X and AMD Threadripper CPUs at stock clock speeds will use between 150 and 180 watts of power. However, overclocked, they can approach 300 watts of power consumption. That's quite a bit. As far as graphics cards go, you can get up to about 250 to 300 watts of power on the top end NVIDIA cards and over 400 watts of power consumption on an RX Vega 64 liquid cooled, especially if you are overclocking it. Now add multiple graphics cards, hard drives, and other peripherals, and that is why you should consider a 1000 watt power supply if you are building such a system. Another benefit to buying a power supply such as this is ultra low noise. This particular power supply does not even turn on the fan until you pull 400 watts of power. So if you are looking for an ultra quiet or ultra silent system, you may want to overbuy your power supply to keep it very quiet. Now many lower end power supplies will also have zero speed fans at low power draw, but they will turn their fan, fans on at a lower number than 400 watts. For example, the 850 watt version of this power supply turns it on at about 300 watts draw. So you're basically pushing the power consumption up before it has to turn the fan on. It is also worth noting on this particular unit that the fan barely turns above idle until you pass 700 watts of power draw. So even if you're pulling five, six, or even 700 watts of power, the fan on this is barely turning and really should be completely completely inaudible. It's only if you're pulling all 1,000 watts would the fan make any kind of noise. Now, who does not need one of these? If you are building a system with an i7-7700K or a Ryzen 7 1700X with any single graphics card, this is way overkill. Even if you're getting an RX Vega 64, this is still overkill. The 750 watt version of this power supply is $60 less expensive and absolutely provides all the power you need for that. Even with the best single graphics card, even with multiple hard drives, multiple storage options, and even an overclocked consumer level processor such as the i7 or Ryzen 7, the 750 watt version of this is plenty. I will link in the video description below to both Amazon and Newegg for the 1000 watt and the 750 watt version of this power supply. It is a big saving, so if you don't need it, get the 750 watt. As a side note, if you are building a more mid-range system with an i5 or a Ryzen 5, even the 750 watt may be overkill. Something such as this would actually be plenty for most people. You can get a bronze rated 600 to 650 watt power supply for under $65 that will do the job just fine. Now it's missing some features from this, I'll talk about that later, but I just want to note that you don't have to spend over $100 for a power supply if you have a more mid-range system in the $800 to $1200 price range. The Corsair RMX line is an 80 plus certified fully modular power supply. So that's going to apply to the 750 as well as the 1000 watt unit. What the 80 plus gold simply means is that it's at least 90% power efficient in the middle power bands where you actually use it in terms of how much power it draws from the wall. 
you can go one step above this and get the HX line from Corsair. It's a little bit more expensive, not too much more, but the benefit to the HX is it's platinum, so it's 92% power efficient. I will link to that in the video description below as well. People who use their computers 24 seven are better served with the platinum models, whereas people who just game two to three hours a day really are better served with the gold units. It's a better price to performance ratio if you're only using your machine a few hours a day. Within the RM line, we have the RMX and the RMI. The only difference between the RMX and the RMI is the I models have the Corsair Link software. There's a USB cable that connects the power supply to one of the USB 2 uh, ports on your motherboard. It lets you run the Corsair Link software to get real-time monitoring of your power supply. They're usually only a few dollars different, so if you're interested in having that Link capability, check out those links down in the description below. Yes, there will be a bunch of links, but basically they're the same power supply, the same efficiency, the same plugs. The only difference is one has the Corsair Link and one doesn't. Some other nice features of the RM line are 100% solid state Japanese capacitors rated to 105 degrees Celsius. They will last a very long time. 10 year parts and labor warranty, completely black flat cables, not just sleeved, but they're actually black end to end. So there's no ketchup and mustard color sticking out either end. And perhaps just as important, the RM line provides all of its power on the 12 volt rail. The 12 volt rail is what powers modern devices, your graphics cards, etc. Many lower end power supplies only deliver a portion of their total power on the 12 volt rail. 100% of the power of these units is available there so you can drive all your graphics cards right to the max of the 1000 watt limit. And then finally, this power supply will fully operate up to 1000 watts at 50 degrees Celsius internal temperature. That is about as good as it gets in the power supply business. Okay, enough of all the talking. If you came to see what this thing looks like, now's the time for that. We will take it out of the box and I will show you everything that comes with it. Inside our nice retail box, you can see here, we have a brown box. In fact, it is still sealed. We still have to break that. And let's open this up and see what is inside. Once we open it up, you can see we have a nice big thick manual. We have a power cord and a bag with all of our modular power cables. And then of course we have foam protecting the power supply itself. Now this reference manual here is in a bunch of different languages, but take a look at how many pages are there. That is, that is an impressively thick manual for a power supply. Here we have our warranty guide detailing our 10 year parts and labor warranty. This may or may not show up on the camera very well, but that is an impressively thick cable. This is absolutely designed for this power supply. Do not use cheap generic power cables, even though the plug on the end is the same with a power supply of this wattage because the cable will get too hot. So they do provide you with an extra thick heavy gauge cable designed for this. We have a bag of zip ties, a sticker for the front of your case and some case screws. Here we have the bag with all the modular cables in it. Keep this bag, it provides you with a nice way to keep all of your cables because you're only going to need to plug in the ones you'll actually use, but you want to keep them in case you need to upgrade for the future. Finally, you can see I've taken the top foam off. You can see the power supply is in a nice velvet bag. Now I've said many times on my channel, that quality products tend to come in quality packaging and cheap products tend to come in cheap packaging. That's not always true, of course, but usually when a company spends money on the packaging, at least the product is of reasonable quality. In my experience, Corsair power supplies are very nice indeed. I've used them for many years. I have multiple power supplies in various systems that I have built over the years. I've had very good luck with them. So I do fully recommend them and give them two thumbs up just based upon my own personal experience since long before I had a YouTube channel. And taking this off, sliding it down, there is plastic inside to protect it as well. And we will take it out. And here you can see the power supply. These are very nice and industrial looking. You can see the RM1000X logo here, and it's the same on both sides. It's actually turned this way, so either way that you choose to mount it or turn it, the label will be the same way. They do actually have a sticker over the power connector here, cautioning you that this has a zero speed fan. Don't be shocked when this huge fan on the bottom does not turn unless you put a very heavy load on your computer. And then here you can see all of the mod modular connectors for all the various ports that you might want to use. This does include a lot of cables, which I'll detail here in a minute. But in short, if you're building a monster system, this is a monster power supply. I have now taken all the cables out of the bag and boy, does this thing have a lot of them. 
First of all, we have an absolutely monster 24 pin ATX power cable. Now there is black sleeving on here because with 24 pins, there's way too much to make it completely flat, but it is flat black all the way to the end of the cable. And then you can see here the 24 pin, the 20 plus four, that is very nice. We have two eight pin CPU power connectors, and these are actually four plus fours. So if you have a high-end motherboard that needs two eight pin CPU power connectors, such as a Threadripper or Skylake X board, this power supply has got you covered. We have four cables here each that has two six plus two eight pin PCI Express power connectors. They can be used as six pin or eight pin selectively. That gives you a total of eight PCI Express power connectors. If you wanna drive four video cards that each require a dual eight pin power connector, this power supply has got you covered. Now in fairness, if that is four Vega 64s, then it doesn't have you covered in the power department, just the connector department. So it does depend upon which graphics card you have. But in terms of connectivity, we do in fact have eight up to eight pin PCI Express power connectors. Next, we have three serial ATA power cables, but they're a little bit different. This one has three SATA connectors and each of these has four. So there's a total of 11 serial ATA power connectors. Now, if you need more, you can certainly get extensions that provide more connectors. This power supply absolutely will provide the power to run them, but it comes with 11 SATA connectors. Finally, should you need them, we have 12 four pin Molex power connectors. These are the old school connectors, which most people don't use anymore, but if you have a specific need for them, they are certainly here. And finally, one adapter cable converting one of the Molex connectors to a four pin floppy connector should you have a floppy drive or some other device that uses a floppy connector. So to sum all of this up, for less than $200, you have a power supply that will run a top of the line, high-end enthusiast desktop platform, run up to four graphics cards, all the hard drives and other peripherals you could possibly want, 80 plus gold, 90 plus percent power efficiency. It is a great, great unit. It's got a 10 year parts and labor warranty. The fan doesn't even turn on until you're pulling more than 400 watts, and it doesn't even turn above idle until you're past 700 watts. I do recommend this unit. I'm gonna be putting this into my own Skylake X build here very shortly. You'll get to see that on my channel. Speaking of which, like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel to be notified of those Skylake X build videos coming up very soon. Questions and comments in the comment section. And as always, check out the links in the video description. Links to this unit, to the RMI model with the Corsair link, to the HXI, which is the 80 plus platinum, more meant for Bitcoin miners and people running their machines 24 seven, as well as a link to the CX models, the budget models. If you're building an 800 to $1,200 machine, yes, this is complete overkill. You really should look at maybe a 650 watt 80 plus bronze for an 800 plus dollar uh, system with an i5 or a Ryzen 5. And that would be what I would recommend there. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video.